All right, so I've got the game here on the left. Get a bit bigger, put it over here on the right. You can see the moves as they're generated behind here in the terminal for the color of the player. There you go, move closer, high punch, move closer, super attack. So as each model responds, and I'm using Llama 3 versus Llama 3 1 right now, then the move is executed in the game, and then they go to an observation round, and then a next move round, et cetera, until the game is over. So that's what I want to take a look at today. So let's dive in now and take a look at how this is implemented and talk a little bit about the changes that I made that I think make it easier to understand the moves that are generated here in the command line output. All right, so here is the original repo out on GitHub, Open Generative AI LL Coliseum. And then you can use that or you can clone the copy that I have if you want the changes that I've made to the output, which by the way, if I come over to Twitter here, I saw this project because Grok made a post here. So Grok has this demonstration of two different instances of this running at the same time, left and right side here. And in the output, basically the difference is there are dozens of repeated lines as the response is streamed back. And I'll show you why in a moment here. But the gist is if you don't want a ton of extra output, you can use the version that I've set up here where you get this nice little block of text for each of the LLM response and then the actual parsed next moves. And that's all you get in the output then. So that's the difference, and that's why I set up a repo. Otherwise, I would have just shown things out of their repo. All right, so over in my repo here, this is a Python project. I do have a notes file that you can refer to. Essentially, I go through the steps here of making sure you're going to get clone, change into the repo, and then you'll need to initialize a virtual environment for Python. I've got the code to do that here. I use Python 3.11. I had trouble with 3.12, so whether or not that's actually the case in reality, just know that 3.11 works. And then next up, once you've installed these dependencies with pip over here on the right, the pip install, then you'll have this executable called Diambra, I believe. Essentially, this is a tool to help run the emulated game. And you can use that, run that then, and list out the available ROMs. So for example, this is what this looks like. Paste this in here. And then you can scroll through here to see the ROMs and see how to basically find these. I can't really show a direct link to this, but basically you're going to Google for the applicable ROM, which is this SFIII3N. So that's the next step is to Google that, find it, download it, verify the SHA, which you can get in the output here as well. Make sure that matches. And then move that into this directory here in the Diambra ROMs directory in your home directory. That way it'll be available when we start things up here in a moment. Once you've moved that then, and maybe I'll zoom in a little here for you. Next up, you want to start dependencies. You need to have Docker running and you also need to have Olama run. So make sure you start an Olama serve before you try to run the game. So I've got that down here below. If I kill that off and run an Olama serve again here, you can see that's running down below. And then you also want to make sure you pull any models that you're using. And if you want to change the models, come into a file called Olama entry. By the way, I renamed this. It was just Olama in the upstream repo, but that was conflicting with the Olama package. So I renamed this just to get around the conflicts. Anyways, inside of here, the definition of the game. And then inside of here, you can see there are two players. Each player then has a model defined. The very first part of this model says we're going to use Olama, so connect to Olama locally. And then the next part gives the name and the tag for the model. So Llama 3 here on top versus Llama 3 1 here on bottom, both the 8 billion parameter models. So whatever you put in here, make sure that you pull that first then. Make sure you do an Olama pull first and put in whatever it is that you want to pull. Llama 3 colon 8B, pull that down. All right, so next up, you're going to want to run a make and local, which is inside of this make file here points out a local target, which essentially just runs with the Olama entry point. So we're just running Python here. All right, so if I come over to the command line here, inside of the directory, I can do a make and a local. This will start up the game here. And it takes about two or three minutes to start up. So just have some patience here. The emulator has to spin up. The game will pop up in a window. And then once the game starts, you'll start to see the moves that are coming out of the models. So essentially what's happening is for each player, there's a separate thread. And then on that thread, each player plans a move. So each one will look at the current state of the game, observe it, if you will, project a move to make then. And however it formats that response, if it's actually correct and gets parsed, then that will turn into the actual parsed next moves. And those next moves then will be executed, assuming that they're valid. And then once the moves are executed, it'll then loop back and observe again and then execute the next move, et cetera. So it's a plan and then an act observe, plan, act, and observe. That's the loop that's running. And there's two of those, one for each player. And so they're running at the same time. All right, so the game has started up here. You can resize the window if you want. Just drag to resize it. 
I'd say put it over the top of the command output here because it makes it a little easier to see what's going on. And so watch for the colors here. Green is for the green player. Red is for the red player. So you can see right here, high kick, oh, it just moves quickly. So move closer, move closer, move closer. The very first part of this is the response from the LLM. And then the second part that says next moves, that's the actual parsed moves. So it's two parts, LLM response, and then next moves. And in some cases, if there are no moves that are parsed out, it'll immediately ask again until the LLM gives a valid response and actually has a move inside of it. And so yeah, that's how the two players are fighting against each other. Plan, act, observe, plan, act, observe. And then once the game runs out or one of the players dies, you can see the game is over at this point in time. You can see who won here. Round one was won by P2. And you can move on to the next round, I guess. In this case, it just closes the console. All right, so that's about it. You can always start up another round just by running again. You could change the models if you want. Remember over in the Olam entry point, that's what I'm running here. Change the models or other configuration. Or if you really wanna know how things are working, there is a robot Python file here. All right, so there's the planning step. If I look for usages on that, actually that's used over in game.py. Here is the loop basically. So first up, here's planning, here's acting, and here's observing. And in planning, I think it's the most interesting part. If you come in here, inside of here, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see here is get moves from the LLM. So there's where the prompt is made. Inside of here, you can see a prompt is created. Right down here, we're calling the LLM. Jump into here. This is a system prompt right here. And then down below, we attach a system and the user message asking for what are your next moves. It then gives a response back. And then we take that response here. If I jump back here. We have that response here. And then in a loop, I basically just wait for the entire response. And this is one of the parts that I made some changes to because previously, all of this logic to be able to parse the response, it was run on every single chunk of the response that was streamed back. And then only the last version of what was parsed would be used. And so that was where the excessive output came from. Basically, every single token that came back or set of tokens led to printing out the tokens or new, as well as taking everything up to that point in time and parsing out any valid moves. And so it was just a weird way to build up the list of moves. In this case, basically, I wait for the response to complete here. I just build up a variable with the entire string. I take that then, and one time I parse through that here. I get out a list of valid moves, a list of invalid moves. And basically, the invalid moves, that's just a warning here. Whereas with the valid moves, those are returned. And if we take a look at where this is used here. So here you get your valid moves out, and then that turns that into button presses, and those button presses are executed. So that's the heart of the loop here come back here. Again, this is where I made most of the changes. So you could take a look at what you want to do here. If you want to change the output, you can see at the command line, all of these red and green chunks of lines are coming right here from this code. Let me split the screen actually. Down at the bottom here, you can see here's the logging of next moves, which would be this line right here or this line right here. And then if I scroll up to the top of this method, right here, you can see I'm printing out the LLM response. I'm also coloring it it's using a framework with a print function that adds coloring. So I essentially determine the color of the player. Sorry for the hovers there. I print out the model. So you can see this is green here and the model is llama 3.18b. And then I print out the response right after that. So you can see in this case, llama used an asterisk, move closer, high kick. And then down below is where the next moves are parsed out and those are what are actually used. All right, so that's about it. If you get a chance to play around with this and you come up with anything interesting, let me know. One of the reasons I wanted to work on this just temporarily is to better understand essentially how you can get models to use tools because this is tool use essentially at the end of the day. You're giving it in a system prompt a list of possible actions and then it has to ask for you to make certain actions and then it observes reality and does that again. So I thought that was interesting. Definitely an interesting way to use tools without needing the API to support tool use and without needing the model to be specifically designed for tool use. So yeah, try this out, see what you think of it. See if this can help you better understand how LLMs think and how they generate responses, and let me know in the comments down below.